Last week, CIG delivered a significant amount of bug fixes to Alpha 3.24, and Insight Star Citizen showed us the upcoming fire propagation tech that will make for a pretty spicy patch once it's released. As more bug fixes are implemented into Alpha 3.24, the next patch threatens to grab a match and set your precious ship ablaze by introducing what is arguably the best looking fire that I've ever seen. If you love to discuss the game's future and enjoy seeing all of the great sim gear and peripherals on the market, smash that like button and consider supporting the channel by clicking that subscribe button so you can stay informed. Welcome back to Last Week in the Verse. Today we're diving into a massive amount of bug fixes for the latest Alpha 3.24 patch. These updates addressed a ton of issues, so let's break down what exactly has been fixed. On Tuesday they delivered their first patch for the week. In this update, the development team has made a significant gameplay adjustment by reducing the trespass timer in personal hangars to zero seconds. This change will now kick any player who isn't part of your party straight back to the ASOP terminal lobby. This change is expected to streamline the experience for players by eliminating the delay associated with trespassers in your personal hangars. This will ultimately make it easier for you to manage your hangars without interruptions. And let's be honest, the change was needed as the 30 second timer still allowed for another player to do plenty of damage. Additionally, several important bug fixes were implemented to enhance the overall game stability and user experience. One of the key fixes addressed a persistent issue in the Stanton system scrapyards where players were unable to lower cargo elevators with cargo attached. This fix will ensure that cargo management in these locations is smoother and more reliable. Another fix targeted a problem with hangar elevators at multiple locations, where only the first player to retrieve a ship would see the correct hangar floor options. This issue was resolved, allowing all party members to access the proper options. Finally, the Tumbrel Cyclone's passenger seat, which had been malfunctioning, has been corrected, restoring full functionality to this feature and improving the vehicle usability during missions and exploration. On Tuesday, their second patch aimed at mitigating the issues with unscheduled rapid disassembly of your favorite ship when flying too close to a planet's surface and water. They essentially did this by making boundary adjustments. This should make for a more forgiving experience when navigating challenging terrains or low flying. Now if we can ultimately eliminate these for good, this will begin putting the game into a better state. They also made more aerodynamic adjustments to the Hornet and Arrow to correct unintended behaviors during yawing in atmospheric flight, which players have been reporting low flying is beginning to feel a whole lot better than before. On the bug fixing front, a series of important issues have been addressed to enhance game stability and functionality. Most notably, audio bleed issues in personal hangars were supposedly resolved in this patch, so players should no longer hear these sounds from neighboring hangars. Unfortunately, there have been reports that this bug is still happening. Several fixes were made to hangar and docking systems, such as resolving the problem where ships would spawn at the bottom of ships' elevators, blocking access, and ensuring docking arms extend correctly at stations. Now, other key fixes include resolving the infinite load issue at Lorville's ASOP terminals, addressing cargo crate miscounting in missions, and ensuring commodity kiosks function properly for buying and selling goods. These fixes collectively addressed a range of technical glitches, which should improve the overall player experience and hopefully reduce frustrations caused by these issues. On Wednesday, they made further atmospheric flight tweaks to the Hornet, continuing their efforts to refine and perfect the flying experience with this ship. This is part of an ongoing effort to resolve many of the major issues that have plagued the Hornet since Master Modes was added, where it flew like a brick. I think once flight control surfaces are in, we could finally see a lot more adjustments take place so more atmospheric ships fly better in atmospheric conditions. They also implemented a range of critical bug fixes to improve the stability and functionality of the PU. One of the significant fixes addressed an issue where players could be assigned to an already occupied hangar by the ATC, which obviously led to extremely frustrating situations when landing. Another important fix ensures that when a player leaves the game with a ship on the pad, the personal hangar will properly reset for the next session, preventing continuity issues when rejoining the game. Other fixes include resolving a bug that caused the global chat to open when interacting with terminals, and correcting issues with the display of auto-loading costs on commodity kiosks. The update also addressed a security issue where players could be killed in a hangar elevator, despite the trespassing timer being set to zero as well as improving the readability of mission text in the Moby Glass Contract Manager. 
On Friday, they stated they'd have a playtest event take place during the weekend, featuring the Blockade Runner Global Event. While this event again promises to deliver intense gameplay and challenges, it's important to know I wasn't able to fully test the event myself. However, supposedly many other testers observed that the servers were offering the same level of poor stability and performance that was experienced during Xenothreat. These issues include many desync issues and general lag that significantly detracted from the overall experience. My hope is that future improvements, particularly with the introduction of server meshing in 4.0, should address some of these problems and provide a more stable and enjoyable experience for large-scale events like Blockade Runner. Now, server meshing is expected to play a critical role in enhancing the performance and stability of the game. The technology aims to distribute the server load more effectively across multiple servers, potentially reducing the strain on any single server during high traffic events. Now, if successful, server meshing could significantly improve the overall gameplay experience during major events, making them smoother and more reliable for all players. But there's also more than that. It could enhance the overall game itself as well making NPCs more responsive, preventing desync, and reducing overall lag. However, until these advancements are fully implemented in the next patch, players may continue to face challenges similar to those seen in previous large-scale events. Now, several key updates were also made to gameplay and vehicle mechanics, aimed at enhancing the overall player experience, particularly for those involved in cargo hauling. A significant change included an update to the rank progression for certain hauling missions, making it smoother and more rewarding for players as they advance through these tasks. Additionally, the Aurora received an update to its cargo physics, which will greatly assist players in manually loading cargo, making the process more intuitive and reliable. The update also addressed a wide range of bugs that have been affecting various aspects of the game. One critical fix resolved issues with the ATC Gateway queue, which previously slowed down during high traffic, preventing hangers from opening promptly. Players should now have a smoother experience when accessing their hangar, even in busy areas. Additionally, problems with elevator functionality such as panels becoming unresponsive were finally corrected, improving transit reliability across different locations. Other significant fixes included resolving the internal error prompt that appeared when transferring cargo to a warehouse via the freight elevator, as well as addressing issues with retrieving ships after they were impounded or stored incorrectly. And finally, adjustments have been made to the MISC Starfarer, correcting its flight tuning to better match its intended role as a heavy industrial ship rather than as a heavy fighter. These updates, along with numerous other bug fixes, aim to provide players a better overall experience in 3.24. Hopefully many of these ongoing issues will continue to be resolved and make the game more playable than before, and that CIG will continue this trend of resolving bugs, especially when 4.0 is released. Now last week during Inside Star Citizen, the developers showed us more of their work on fire as it's about to make its debut in the Persistent Universe and it's going to change the way you navigate your ship and vehicles in ways you've never imagined. Fire isn't just some cool visual effect or random event. The upcoming fire propagation technology has been meticulously crafted to interact with the environment in realistic and dynamic ways. Now for its initial implementation, the team has decided to keep the focus on the interior of ships. By doing so, they can fine tune the system in a controlled environment before expanding it further. Now, as the developers have stated, the reason that this is only implemented for ships and not planetary environments is due to tech limitations. Of course, it wouldn't be an Inside Star Citizen episode without someone mentioning tech limitations. The fire propagation system is deeply integrated with the resource network system, which is how we'll repair the components of our ship, distribute power, control life support, and much more. Now, this means that fires will behave in a way that feels natural with the ship's environment. Fires can be triggered by various types of damage, whether from malfunctioning ship items, environmental factors like extreme heat, or direct impacts from weapons or explosions. One of the fascinating aspects of the system is not only how incredible the visual effects look, but also how detailed the technology is. Fires start small, slowly spreading from their ignition point, and if left unattended, they will grow and spread more quickly. The intensity of the fire, its speed, and the way it consumes different materials are all determined by a combination of factors such as available oxygen, 
fuel types, and heat. Now, for example, metals won't catch fire as quickly as rubber or plastic, but the cables and pipes behind those metal panels might just be the spark that starts a blaze. As you might imagine, managing a fire on board larger ships is going to become a crucial skill. Now, this is one of those skills that's probably going to be pretty obtuse, but still important nonetheless. The development team has thought of various ways for players to deal with fires, from using fire extinguishers, which require sustained focus to fully put out the flames, to more strategic methods like cutting off oxygen to starve the fire, or venting your ship's atmosphere into space. But it's not just about putting out fires. You'll also have to consider the aftermath. Fires will leave behind burn marks and damage that can only be repaired at a station. The visual damage to your ship will serve as a reminder of the harrowing experience you survived, or perhaps as a badge of honor, depending on how you want to look at it. I do, however, hope that they'll allow us to repair our ships ourselves, rather than force us to always repair it at a station. Now, the repair mechanic is one of those gameplay mechanics that have been needed for the better half of the last four years. But the team has also made sure that fire interacts with the multiplayer environment in a stable and synchronized way. This synchronization is crucial in a game where every decision could mean life or death in the vacuum of space. Or the difference between surviving a terrible fate and respawning back in Stanton after you've made the long trek to Pyro. Simply put, the stakes will be higher once fire is introduced. A fire left unchecked can cripple or even destroy your ship. But with the right tools and quick thinking, you can contain it and live to tell the tale. Just don't forget to keep an eye on that fire extinguisher. It might save your ship or your life. The recent 3.24 PTU patches have brought a host of improvements, bug fixes, and gameplay enhancements. Now, while some players don't find this patch as important, it's still the patch that separates us from 4.0. Now, the development team has shown a strong commitment to fixing even more bugs than I have honestly seen in previous patches. They focused on refining core systems like hangar management, flight dynamics, and cargo handling, addressing long-standing issues while also laying the groundwork for future updates. These changes from reducing trespasser delays in personal hangars to fine-tuning atmospheric flight mechanics demonstrate a clear focus on improving both the functionality and enjoyment of the game. Moreover, the introduction of the fire provocation technology marks another step forward in the game's realism and challenge. By focusing initially on ship interiors, the developers are ensuring that this new feature is both impactful and manageable within the current game environment. The attention to detail in how fires start, spread, and are extinguished underscores the level of immersion that players want to see more of in the future. The upcoming integration with the resource network system will only deepen this experience, making fire management a critical skill for survival. If they can further apply the same level of focus to other aspects of the game to increase the realism, but also gamify certain aspects, then they will begin going in the right direction. My biggest issue with 3.24 has and will continue to be the obvious problems with the item bank where we are still being forced to access several different user interfaces to equip our characters. The most simplistic solution to item banks that I would love to see in either 4.0 or the subsequent patch is to introduce a personal management app within the item bank UI. This way players could equip their character with all of the gear that they want to withdraw from the item bank drawer. If they were to implement this fix, it would make for a significantly better experience and remove a lot of the jarring and disjointed management of our character's inventory. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want to stay updated on all things Star Citizen, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Your support helps keep this channel going. And let me know in the comments what you think of the new fire propagation, as I would love to hear your thoughts. If you want to join the channel and support the creation of these videos that help you stay connected and up to date with everything going on in Star Citizen, then consider becoming a member and get new updated loyalty badges, priority replies, and exclusive member-only channels in my Discord. And if you want to see six of my most anticipated games coming this year and next, then you'll want to check out this video. Fly safe, pilots, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a go.